Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new video where we are going to go over the new champion, Lilia, the Bashful Bloom. Now, it's a really fun new champion. Her playstyle is very interesting, not really too similar to any other champion, and I am excited for this. And hopefully this guide, I'm releasing it only a couple days after her release on the live server, so hopefully this is going to help you guys out, first of all, by giving you a better understanding of the champion as a whole, as well as maybe helping that person that gets in your solo queue and it, they are first time in rank, giving them a decent understanding understanding of the champion now i put timestamps at every single spot uh in this video they're going to be both at the top of the page where you can skip to the next tip if you already have a good understanding of what i'm talking about as well as the scrolling bar down below it is going to be segmented into the different tips so you can go where you please with all that all right now i am a bit limited with this format only doing five tips so i heavily encourage you guys to put your own tips down below and with all that out of the way let's jump into tip number one all right, and jumping into tip number one, the most important tip, and this is coming down to positioning with Lilia. It is very, very important that you have a good understanding of how the Q is going to be doing 100% more damage when you get them on the outside of the Q, as well as the sweet spot of the W. If you just want to TLDR, the W is very similar to a Zerith W, where it does more damage in the middle of the W, so um, just think of it like that. And the Q, uh, Blooming Blows is very similar to Darius and how they, it is going to do more damage in the outside ring. So, very basic knowledge about the champion. Everyone knows this, but how you can look to effectively play this is going to be very important similar to how darius likes to take ghosts a lot and buy early boots and get that early phage passive he really relies on getting in good positioning when he is playing darius so you want to bring that over to lilia because this is going to be a extreme amount of your damage particularly in aoe fights where you're going to be fighting several targets so understanding that early boot buys are going to be extremely important as well as some items that might give movement speed or running things like phase rush or celerity or even water walking can be extremely effective so when playing a tank things like dead man's plate and other things that augment movement speed can be exceedingly effective effective if you are playing against champions that are very very slippery now you might be able to rely on just slowing enemy downs with and the enemy down with something like a just throwing in a swirl seed this allows you to close the distance get a q and then throwing them with the w or you can do it the other way around doing the e into the w into the q now the most important part of this is how you are going to be getting an increased movement speed with each one of these stacks you should be treating her a little bit like echo and how you want to go in and out of fights depending on the current situation and cool down window usage that is going on in the team fight so playing this champion is going to be a little bit harder because she is um but she can get punished quite heavily. Now, she isn't a melee champion. She does have a decent amount of range on her auto attacks, but she is relatively a medium range mage. And what that means is she's going to be very similar to a lot of the other medium range mages. And if you haven't noticed it, this before, they are extremely high skill cap champions. They are things like Rise. They are things like Vlad. They are things like Azir that are going to take a lot of time to get used to and uh, understand the different distancing when playing Lilia. Now, this is... If you only get one thing out of this is just get really good at understanding positioning enemy dashes and their ability to get out and your overall ability to take out a champion and be able to just prance away with your Q passive. That will wrap up tip number one. All right, and tip number two, probably in my opinion, the most exciting ability that was added to this champion's kit is Swirl Seed's ability to have infinite range. And I want to talk a little bit about the risk versus reward when throwing this out. This is a kind of, it's a relatively low mana spell that should probably be thrown out in almost every single situation when coming out of base just to get a little bit of poke damage maybe to scout out an enemy or to most importantly proc other abilities for other champions and what i mean by this is maybe there is something like a Jin on your team that needs a hit on a target to be able to throw out a w maybe there is something like an execute on your team where an ergot just needs a little bit more damage on a target and you are able to provide that execute threshold so always be looking to throw out your swirl seed when you are um, point Lilia and you are just leaving the base now you can look for the creases in the lanes so you do not hit the towers and you can just look to throw out this 
and it only takes 70 mana. It's relatively short cooldown. It will be back up in the game, and you can look to assist your mid range or your mid lane uh, champion if you're playing it in a different role. And it is going to just be able to be a very, very low risk type of ability, as well as it is going to just possibly provide a very large amount of value in the different fights also what it does is it provides vision and if you didn't know the sleep has a alt it has a infinite range so anything anyone that is affected by it even if they're out of vision even if they are all the way over at their nexus they will fall asleep so you can provide a huge amount of picks from this champion and it is going to provide a lot of very exciting plays so always 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 be looking for those really long range unexpected picks now you're not going to be hitting them with regular ease when you first start but it might just tip the scales in one way in a certain lane now it is going to be it, it doesn't have the highest upside you're not going to hit a lot because it is a relatively telegraph skill it is going to be rolling at them not at the fastest rate and some people are going to start expecting especially if you keep throwing it down the mid lane so maybe that five percent chance you just start adding that into the game oh you can turn the lane for your mid laner um, in five percent of games that's going to help you overall climb with these small incremental gains with just overall a better understanding of the champion and using her kit to the maximal maximum amount of um, ability to carry games and that will wrap up this tip all right and getting into tip number three for lilia it is going to be talking about one of her key strengths that i think is relatively you don't see it as you first look at the champion's kit but she is going to be an extremely flexible champion that is going to be able to take on a variety of roles in the games from being able to play different lanes to building different items to have a different type of play style for different games, getting a good understanding of where she can fit in and how certain team comps function and what their win condition is going to be a very important thing. So people with high game knowledge are going to be able to perform a very at a very high level on this champion extremely quicker than people that are maybe one tricks that are kind of stuck in their ways. They always like playing assassin, so they're going to try and build this champion assassin. So I heavily encourage you guys to be really um, take an open mind with this champion. Don't follow one guide that you saw online at release date and think that that is the best build for the rest of the season that is going to do yourself a disservice look at the enemy team hey there is a bunch of assassins a bunch of squishies on this team my team doesn't have any tanks maybe i need to be a frontline champion with a little bit of a cc bot of using the uh lullaby as well as your slow and just taking advantage of your really high base damages that is going to be provided from your passive now uh, if you want an example of something that I think this might serve a very similar role to as the old tank Echo before they nerfed a lot of his base damages where he was able to build Triforce into full tank and just do an insane amount of damage and be extremely tanky. So keep this in mind that you can adjust your play style, your items, your runes towards the different games and I'm extremely excited about this. However, one drawback is whenever a champion is extremely flexible, can play several lanes and can be strong as I think that there is going to be a rather high uh, pro play rate on this and it will be a valuable flex pick so you might see some nerfs on this champion if she proves to be extremely strong in this meta i don't think anyone can tell as of right now but i think that she is a rather strong candidate with a very fun diverse kit now if you have any questions about particular items i'd love to help you out in the comments down below i don't want to go jabbering on too much but i think a extremely necessary item is going to be the leandry's torment because if you didn't know it is going to proc the same way a brand's passive was because it does damage over three seconds it is continually procking your leandre's torment so it's going to just be a absolute great item when you are playing it as well as something like a rylize if you want to go a little bit down the heavy ap health build it is going to continuously apply that rylize so keep that in mind and the full tank would probably go a little bit around dead man's plate maybe a little bit of mobility into some just heavy resistance gear uh yeah that will wrap up tip number three all right, and getting into tip number four, I'm going to just cover two things really quickly. Now, if you're first playing Lilia, you see the W, it might look a little bit like a dash, but she is just running up to it after you input the command. You are not able to even get over some of the skinniest walls in the game, even though it looks like it should happen, it does not. However, 
the pathing is extremely smart on this so you won't get stopped by this wall if you say throw it over right over there as long as the character model can get through it and walk to your circle with a relative um, ease it will go that way but if you put too much of a wall between you and your W she will just get caught on the wall so just keep in mind you don't have to be as strict as maybe scion ulting through the jungle and not hitting walls you do have to be very mindful of not getting too far behind the walls because you will just pull a really big oopsie like that happened right there so just get heavily acquainted to where you can look to throw out your W's and this will avoid you from a lot of frustration. The second thing I want to add in this tip is her insane ability to get picks from Fog of War. Whenever you have a champion that relies very heavily on positioning and landing skills, uh, spell shots in certain areas on people that know what you are looking to do, similar to Darius, playing Fog of War and getting vision traps on people is going to be exceedingly important. Now, I know these are very rare. People very rarely take advantage of these in lower elo, so I heavily encourage you to try this out in a game, particularly when you're ahead and you can just kill the enemy jungler extremely quickly in his jungle by maybe setting up with an E into a W and getting a Q off before the enemy can react is going to be an extremely strong way to just take full advantage of her kit because you are able to get the improved W w that just is a huge nuke and to get the true damage and extra damage on your q as well as be able to chase them down with all the stacks because you have a extremely high chance of hitting the champion that does not see where you're coming from so keep these two tips in mind when you are first picking up you as you play or more and more these will become more obvious but as you first start these are two things that i really want you guys to try because i think these are going to be really important for snowballing the game and that will wrap up this tip all right, and jumping into tip number five, we're going to cover something exceedingly advanced, but can it will be the most insane way to be able to show your skill on this champion. It is going to just really separate crazy players from just maybe the average uh, player picking up this champion, and that is your insane ability to auto space melee champions and kite them out with your passive. What I mean by that is the auto attack range is a very nice auto attack range. It is perfect for when you want to set up your Q because you are right in that range. And when you are landing abilities, you are increasing your movement speed. So you are able to kite people out extremely easy the more spells you land and you are able to just constantly harass immobile melee champions at a very strong rate. So get very good at doing a orb walk around a champion. There is very little reason outside of doing proccing a W on someone to just be right on top of them, unless maybe you're doing a tank build and you want to get your Sunfire Burn on the enemy champion. But staying in this sweet spot where you're able to auto and you're right at the edge of the Q blade, it is going to be a really good skill to pick up as well as weaving in your autos in between the different um, spells that you are going to be throwing out is going to be very, very important. You can get things like Rylize that is going to help you kite people even more. So imagine that this player is a tank. Maybe he's playing something like a Malphite and he already used his ultimate earlier in the team fight. How is this champion going to reach you if you're constantly slowing, staying on the outside of him, slowing him down, doing true damage with your ultimate? This is just going to be a great way to be a harassing champion that is going to do a lot of damage with the passive and be very strong as the team fights go on. So just get into a practice tool, get extremely acquainted with her auto attack range because it is rather unique. Only a few champions have this kind of weird mid range kind of deal. Things like Urgot, things like a uh, Graves kind of come to mind with her auto attack range. But what this allows you is to kite out the enemies. The last thing you would want to do with this champion is to treat her like a melee champion and just be right on top of your enemies so that will wrap up my final tip guys if you have any questions for me you can hit me up in the um, comments down below i'm going to put a link to my discord as well as my twitch if you just want to send me a uh, dm i always look to um, help my viewer base as much as possible so with all that out of the way guys take it easy and i'll talk to you later